Hello, God bless you. Hope everyone is having a great day. This is Brother David. I want to bring out a beautiful scripture. Today we're in the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 16, which says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hmm, thank you, Lord. Amen. You see, we as Christians, we can come boldly before the throne. But you know, there's rulers who are unapproachable. They're unapproachable by anybody, except for their highest advisors. No one can just come visit a king or a ruler, just walk up to their throne and ask for something. But in contrast, the Holy Spirit calls for all of us to come confidently before God's throne to receive mercy and grace through Christ Jesus. It was the, at the throne of God that Jesus had made an atonement for our sins. And it is there that grace is dispensed to believers for all issues of life. The real meaning of obtaining mercy is receiving compassion in our weakness and in our trials. Grace meets every need. Jesus, who is our high priest, has perfect knowledge of the help that we are required for our need. This gives us the assurance that the help shall be given as needed and in the perfect time of need. Only Christianity provides such boldness for sinful men to approach such a holy God. And that boldness is only possible because of our high priest Jesus and the power of his atoning blood. The figure of the throne suggests a place of authority and provision. It is a place to obtain God's grace when it especially is needed. Jesus Christ had torn the veil that separated God from man when he died on the cross. The way to the, to the Father is provided through the name of Jesus. Jesus gave us the right to use his name. When we pray to God the Father in the name of Jesus, God answers our prayers. The center figure in Christian faith is not some remote deity or a flawed spirit or being with no understanding of human nature. If it were the case, then prayer would be a terrifying and possibly meaningless experience. Fortunately for us Christians, Jesus not only understands our struggles and failures, he has overcome them firsthand. We can maintain our faith in the face of struggles, knowing that Christ Jesus has already shown us the way. He not only experienced suffering, death, and temptation, but he did it without succumbing to sin. Knowing then that Jesus fully understands our weaknesses and has experienced our pain, we can come to him in prayer. When we come to God asking for mercy and grace and help or forgiveness, we can be confident and assured nobody can understand our pain better than Jesus. Which is why only Jesus can be our high priest as well as a substitute for the payment of our sins. He is a high priest who we can trust. He took our sins away when he died on the cross and he is now with God. He's our high priest in heaven. He is our mediator for all who trust in him. So we don't need to have a high priest on earth to go to God for us. We can boldly approach God himself because of the work that Jesus did. We can always look to God for help whenever we have a need. And in his love, he will be kind to us for he knows how weak we are and he will pardon all our sins and make us clean again. And he will give us the strength that we need to help us in difficult times. See, so this is what we've been talking about. And we need to know this now more than ever because we are so close to this thing ramping up. If you had the Holy Spirit dwelling in, in you, then you could feel how close we are. Maybe you just first felt this excitement that you can't wait to see Jesus. But then the more and more as the world is just turning insane around us when this Bible tells us 
to pray for Israel, to have a love for Israel, and that God will bless those that bless Israel, that they bless the Jewish people, he will curse those that curse them. But we see college campuses spreading all this hate for Israel. All this madness is going on, and if, and if you had the Holy Spirit indwelling you, then you could feel that it's not more than just an excitement to see Jesus. It's more of a, I don't belong here anymore. This is in my home. So as we see all the craziness around us, and we know how short time is, we just keep sharing these verses to show you the grace of God. It is the mercy of God that we are still here because there's still people that God has given the opportunity to turn to Jesus. He's extending his grace to those who don't know Jesus right now. And that grace is an unearned gift. You can't earn it. You don't deserve it. This unearned gift of salvation, the grace of God has been extended. That's why we're still here. But like I said, if you have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, you know that we're so close. You can feel it. With all these wars going on, everyone talking about nuking each other and everything. With all this hatred for Jews, and it's coming for us Christians too. The Lord is calling us. If we are called by the name of Jesus to share Jesus with someone, to show someone who doesn't believe in Jesus the grace of God. So that's what we've been doing with every video when we share the gospel. We're showing you the grace of Jesus. You may intellectually know who Jesus is. You may know what he did on the cross. But you don't know him personally. You don't take the time to talk to him to get to know him, to pray, to read the Bible. So you don't understand this grace, this mercy, that God loves you so much that he's extending this offer. Because one day, one day that trumpet will sound. And these Christians who are sharing about Jesus' return, talking about the rapture, will be gone. You won't have me here telling you these verses and sharing the gospel every day. Because I'll be gone. But before I go, while I still have breath in my body, while I'm still on this earth, I want to extend the invitation for you to come to Jesus for you to know this grace and mercy that we're talking about today. And know that all you got to do is call on the name of the Lord and you can approach the throne of God. You don't have to have anybody interceding for you. You don't have to go to someone who calls himself a prophet. You don't have to go to somebody who says they're a high priest. You don't have to make any offerings. You don't have to, you just boldly come before the throne of grace. Cry out to God. Say, Lord, I need you. Whatever your circumstance is. So for those of you who don't know Jesus today, we want to extend this invitation of the gospel. It is the mercy of God that we are still here to share this with you. Because one, once we're gone, the word says that there will be a famine in the word, which means that you won't have people sharing the true gospel. Because they will be gone. So right now, but while we're still on this earth, we want to share this hope with you and extend God's mercy and let him give you his salvation that only can be obtained through Jesus Christ. So the gospel in a nutshell is that because of the fall from Genesis chapter 3, sin entered the world. Sin creates a wall that separates all of us from God because all of sin and fallen short of the glory of God. The wages, the punishment for sin is death. Meaning because of our sins, not one of us is worthy of going to heaven. There's a punishment for our sin. And because of our sin, we all deserve this punishment. And we are all destined to destruction, which means we are all destined to hell. But God loves you so much that God, the Son, Jesus, left heaven, became a flesh and blood human. Fully God, fully man. Jesus lived a perfect, sinless life, and on the cross, Jesus became sin for us to pay our sins. Meaning when Jesus was on the cross... Jesus put our sins on himself. Jesus took the punishment for our sins, the punishment that we deserve. Jesus took it in our place. So when you believe the gospel message and are saved, then you put on Jesus' righteousness because we, like a garment, are stained with sin. But when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then you are washed clean with the precious blood of Jesus, washed white as snow. And now when God looks at you, he doesn't see your sin. Now God sees Jesus. The gospel message is Jesus died for our sins, was buried and rose again from the dead on the third day. 
And if you confess Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you will be saved. Whoever believes in Jesus will have eternal life. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved from what you may ask? Saved from an eternity in hell. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but by Jesus. Jesus is the only way to get to heaven. There is not multiple ways to get to heaven. No one else can save you. A preacher won't save you. Your mom or your daddy, they won't save you. Your works, your deeds won't even save you. Salvation cannot be found anywhere else or in anyone else. Salvation can only be obtained by Jesus Christ because Jesus' blood is a ticket. On the cross, Jesus paid the price for our sins, took our punishment. Jesus' blood is what bought our ticket in heaven. Jesus' blood is what covered our sin debt, past, present, and future. Jesus' blood is what broke down the wall that separates us from God. Jesus' blood redeemed us, bought us back, paid the ransom to free us from the power of sin. So if you sincerely believe and surrender your life to Jesus, when you're not just saying words, you're not trying to please someone, you're not looking for a get-out-of-hell-free card, but you really believe in what Jesus did for you on the cross and you truly want to live for him now, then you will be saved. This is Jesus' free gift to you, and all you have to do is accept it. Because we cannot earn our way to heaven. We cannot be a good enough person. We can't do enough good deeds. And when you stand before God, it will not matter how much you've given to charity or that you think that you're a good enough person that you never robbed or killed anybody. Because our works, our deeds are not good enough to get us into heaven. It is by grace that we are saved through faith. It is not of ourselves. It's a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Grace meaning an unearned gift. We cannot earn it. We do not deserve it. Meaning we cannot earn our way to heaven. We don't even deserve to go to heaven, but God loves us enough that he made a way. And we always follow the gospel with the warning of Jesus' imminent return. Right now you can personally know who Jesus is, but one day soon, and how soon we don't know. But complete hell on earth will come. We can see it coming. The world is getting darker by the minute. The Bible predicts that the shadow of the tribulation is so big right now we can barely see light around it. And one day soon the restrainer who is holding all hell back will be removed. Then the tribulation will begin, and it will be a time of terrifying supernatural events, scarier than any movie you've seen or nightmare you ever had. Each day will get progressively worse. It will be literal hell on earth. It is coming. Bible prophecy is jumping off the page. And I want you to know Jesus personally before all hell breaks loose. Because right now, before the tribulation, we are under the age of grace, meaning that right now is the easy way out to come to Jesus. All you have to do is sincerely believe in who Jesus is and what he did for you on the cross. And surrender your life to him. Accept Jesus free gift, that free ticket into heaven. But after the tribulation begins, the age of grace will be over. And then it will be the hard way, and you have to do more than just believe in Jesus. You'll have to die for Jesus. But I love you, and I don't want that for you. So right now, before the age of grace is over, please turn to Jesus today. Because one thing is for sure, the Bible is clear. We are not guaranteed tomorrow. And even if we are here to see something else is coming, who knows how long we'll be able to survive. But the point is that the end is here. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. You need to turn to Jesus today. You do not have time to keep putting Jesus off. So if you don't know Jesus personally, please take the time to get to know him today while you still have the time. You know, whatever excuse you may be telling yourself right now why you haven't came to Jesus, whether it's you're waiting until your financial secure, waiting until the children are out of the house, whatever it may be, you need to stop putting Jesus off. There's no guarantee you will live to see tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation. So if you'd like to be saved, we have in the description box a link to the ABCs of salvation and a simple prayer. But these are just templates, an outline of what you can say to be saved. It is not a repeat after me. There are no magic words to be saved. In fact, these words are not even important. But if you want to be saved, it just needs to be a sincere prayer from your heart that you can't do this on your own, that you need a Savior. And you are admitting that you're a sinner in need of a Savior, in need of Jesus, and you repent of your sins, meaning you're turning away, having a change of heart, a change of mind. And whatever you may be battling right now, if you trust in the Lord and let Him, the Holy Spirit will lead you, guide you, and change you if you let Him. Well, I pray you got something others, but never take my word for it. Because no one on this earth has the answers you're looking for. Whether it's the most famous preacher, the smartest person in the world, they do not have the answers. Only God does, and you only receive your answers through prayer 
and by reading the Bible. And it is so very important to read the Bible for yourself. Just picking random verses or listening to someone read or preach for a few minutes. You will not get the full picture. They can't even scratch the surface of what is in the Bible. So read and discover these stories for yourself. The Bible will strengthen you and help you to face any and every trial, tribulation, temptation, or struggle that you may be going through right now. In the description box, we have several sources to read the Bible. If you need prayer today, please reach out to us. We want to stand in agreement with you and pray for your needs. Or if you have a praise report, please share it with us. We love to praise Jesus right along with you for what he's doing in your life. Well, I pray you got something out of the video today. If you did, give God glory. I cannot wait to see what the Lord has for us tomorrow. I love you. Jesus loves you. God bless you. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow if the Lord tarries or we'll see the clouds.